Is your fundraising event seeing significant growth in both attendance and giving, or has your event hit a plateau? If it's the latter, then watch this video and incorporate the recommendations to see your income soar. Keep watching. A decade ago, I was contacted by a nonprofit in Chicago who, according to them, was stuck with their dinner. For a handful of years before contacting me, they had gotten into a routine of charging for their dinner, selling tickets, and then asking guests to make a donation at the end of the event. Their most recent dinner saw $20,000 in ticket sales and $10,000 in donations at the end of the event from 200 to 250 guests. But their event, kept getting the same people year in and year out. People who were already committed to the organization and they weren't developing new friends of the organization and definitely weren't raising much in the way of funds. Certainly not enough to fund a growing organization. After evaluating their situation, my first recommendation to the board and staff was to stop selling tickets, provide complimentary meals and open it up to rely on the generosity of the guests at the end of the night. Well, the board thanked me for my time and told me they'd get back to me. I knew what that meant. Don't call us, we'll call you. I get it. It was hard for them to essentially write off 20000 in advanced ticket sales, most of which helped to pay the hotel for its upfront costs and rely on giving at the end, which to that point was only $10,000. But six months later, I got a call from the board chair, and her words were, Okay, we're going to go with your recommendation, but you're going to have to talk us through this one, which I did. In their mind, my plan was a huge risk, but I wasn't nervous at all. Long story short, their next dinner saw 450 guests and nearly $100,000 in cash and commitments. And their dinner has grown every year to where in 2019 pre-pandemic, they had 677 guests and over $220,000 given or committed. Needless to say that a few years after first asking me to help, the board chair said to me, you know, that decision to no longer sell tickets or tables was the toughest decision I ever made as a board chair, but it was easily the best decision I ever made. And that story is repeated over and over again all over the world. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the reasons why charging for your event may be hurting you more than helping you. Reason number one, you're excluding anyone who has never heard of your organization. It's a proven fact that the first few years that your organization sells tickets or tables, that the event does well. The reason is that your organization is selling tickets or tables to the best people, board members, donors, friends of the organization who already love you and who would easily spend $25, $50, or even $100 for a ticket, or $100, $250, or even $500 for a table to support your organization. And at that point, it looks like this is going to be a successful model for your organization because you've gotten tens of thousands of dollars up front to pay for the cost of the event. But after about three to five years, this way of doing things gets old and your people start saying, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And those efforts to sell tickets or tables begins to wane. At the same time, because this event has relied on current donors alone for support, attendance begins to dwindle. The reason prospects and suspects, those who know little to nothing about your organization, have not been attending the event because it seems awkward or strange for them to come to an event where they're having to buy a ticket. And it's hard for current donors to ask people to attend because there's a price tag. Think of this conversation. Hi, Joe. Mary and I would like for you to join us for the XYZ fundraising dinner on May 19th. We've been friends of the organization for 10 years, and I know you've never heard of them before, but thought you might want to find out about them. Oh, by the way, the cost of the dinner is $50 a person. Will that be cash or check? Well, that's a very awkward conversation for both the inviter and the potential guest. Now, think of another scenario. What if there were no cost to the guest? The conversation will go like this. Hey, Joe, Mary and I would like for you to join us for the XYZ fundraising dinner on May 19th. We've been friends of the organization for 10 years. I know you've never heard of them, and as a result, they're making it possible for you to attend free of charge so that you can hear all the exciting things they're doing. Will you go with us? 
Now that's a much more comfortable conversation and generally gets many people to attend. Dinners grow by multiplication, not replication. When organizations tell, sell tickets or tables, all they get is returning guests for a while. But simply inviting returning guests means replication and that eventually stops. Multiplication comes from current donors bringing new people and the next year those new people bringing their friends, more new people, and so on and so on. Reason number two, you're taking away people's incentives to give at the end. Exit interviews and other research I've done has shown that the average person has no idea how much a meal costs at a fundraising event. Most guests think the meal at a hotel, civic center, country club, or other venue costs the same as when they go out for dinner. So, if it costs them $25 to $35 for an entree at a restaurant, they think it costs the same at the venue. Except, with a larger audience, they assume your organization got a quantity discount. This leads them to believe that the dinner at a fundraising event probably costs about $15 to $20 a person. However, in reality, the average cost of a meal at an event venue is about $50, exclusive of tax and gratuity. That means when your organization sells tickets at $35 or $55, they're actually losing money, hoping that they're going to make it up through donations at the end when the appeal is made. The guest, on the other hand, sees the ticket price of $35 or $55 and thinking the cost of the meal is $15 to $20, assumes there is a donation incorporated in the ticket price. As a result, at the end of the night, they give little or nothing. Then your organization wonders why people aren't giving and think it's their cause, the person who made the appeal, or a myriad of other reasons why giving was low. When people are offered a complimentary meal, the assumption is the guest will at a minimum cover their meal cost at the end of the appeal. But if they really enjoyed the dinner and the program and found the organization compelling, then they'll give above and beyond the cost of the meal, sometimes much more. Reason number three, charging for tickets means guests can't get a full tax deduction from their donation. The Internal Revenue Service is very clear that organizations that charge for tickets must share the declared value of the meal with the donor, and the donor must take that value off the donation they make that night. That means if the declared value of the meal is $50 and a guest gives $75 at the end of the night as a donation, the guest can only get a receipt for $25 and only declare that amount on their taxes. Determining the value of the meal is complicated and reporting on that value and issuing a receipt factoring in the declared value is a time-consuming process for your staff. When the meal is complimentary, things are viewed very differently. The IRS has ruled that if everyone in the audience gets a complimentary meal, whether they give a gift or not, everyone getting the same benefit, then the donation or gift given at the end of the night is 100% income tax deductible. That means no declared value and no special receipts. That alone makes organizational leaders give a sigh of relief. Reason number four, selling tickets does not solve your financial challenges. One of the most desirable things that lead most organizations to charge for tickets is that advanced ticket sales allow you to pay the upfront cost of the venue, which is usually the immediate deposit. This can be anywhere from $500 to $1,000 to up to 10 to 20% of the total bill, with the remaining amount due 72 hours before the event, which means you're charged before you even raise any money. The problem is the money stops there. Remember, I said that because tickets are charged upfront, people give little on the back end. That means when you pay for your revenue expenses, there's little to nothing left to put into programs and projects. And sometimes advanced ticket sales don't even cover all the costs of the venue. Paying the upfront costs only makes you feel good going into the event debt free. It does nothing to stimulate giving the night of the event. I recommend two strategies for that. Number one, better negotiate your costs with the venue. Ask them to reduce the cost of the deposit. Ask them, how many people would I need to guarantee to get you to waive the deposit? You'd be surprised how many will work with you in that area. And then see if they're willing to extend you credit, 
where you can pay the bill on a credit card, which won't be charged until 72 hours before the event, but that credit card doesn't have to be paid until 30 days before you're charged interest on your card. Or better yet, if they'll allow you to have direct bill, that means the venue won't charge you until 30 days after the event, that works well. Usually only large chain hotels extend direct bill, but it never hurts to ask. And direct bill is established with prior credit or, or a solid payment history from a similar venue. But all those do is help you with cash flow, which is important, but negotiating meal prices will save you overall. If you can reduce your entree by two to six ounces, usually translating into $1 an ounce, that saves you two to six dollars per meal, and that's real savings. But second, if you can use advanced commitments to your advantage, you'll increase income. If you can get the same people who previously bought tables or who in the past sponsored your event to commit to helping to add to a matching gift fund, that will leverage giving at the end of the night. Offering a matching gift, and I've described matching gifts in this video above, and especially a matching gift to everyone giving above a specific giving level, then you can get much more at the end of the night. For example, you say that night, ladies and gentlemen, any gift given tonight of $1,200 or $100 a month will qualify to have your gift matched up to $25,000 or whatever the match limit is. That makes your giving soar. Upfront ticket sales and ticket purchases will never do that. Reason five, selling tables is not the answer. If you got this far, you should be convinced that selling tickets is not the answer. It limits the number of attendees, it's a disincentive to give, it reduces tax deductions, and it doesn't motivate people to give more at the end of the night. But if you're like many nonprofit leaders, your creative thinking has led you to the next logical conclusion, that selling tables is the answer, and you'd be dead wrong. Offering people complimentary meals and invitations because someone bought a table does not help your attendance or allow your event to grow. Let me explain. Once again, just like selling tickets, when selling tables, you go to your best donors, board members, friends, to purchase a table. And the average acceptable table charge is anywhere between 250 and 500. But when your best friends purchase a table, they see this as their gift to your organization and don't see a need to give at the end of the dinner, seeing that as the role of a guest, not the table host at that point. So you just successfully downgraded some of your best donors since they don't give at the end of the evening. And selling tables takes away the incentive for hosts to get the best guests at the dinner. Instead of buying a table and filling it with guests of means or great capacity, hosts fill the table with warm bodies. You, th you see this on the bulletin boards of so many corporations. Flyers that say, ladies and gentlemen, XYZ Corporation has purchased the table at ABC Fundraising Dinner. If you want a free meal, come join us at our table. And in fact, some even say, don't worry about giving when asked. Our corporation has covered your cost through our table sponsorship. What? That defeats the purpose of what you're trying to do. Get new gifts and new financial partners. And some hosts may rationalize that they're saving you money by not filling the table because your organization isn't paying for the meals. And that logic is crazy, but all too prevalent. The solution is to simply ask your best people to fill a table with no obligation except to fill the table with qualified individuals, those individuals interested in the mission of your organization and with the capability and interest in giving a gift or at least willing to consider a gift at the end of the evening. For the record, we average 92% of the people coming to our dinners give at least something from a sacrificial gift to covering the cost of your meal. When selling tables, we average less than one table per friend of the organization purchasing a table. When we ask friends to fill a table with qualified guests, we get an average of two tables per friend. And how do we do the multiplication part that leads to success mentioned earlier? Well, each table host is asked to target one couple or single that came the prior year and challenge them to fill a table and invite qualified guests to the next. And that works, so the dinner multiplies fast. And the end result is that we see three to five times more income at the end of the event by not charging for tickets or selling tables. If you followed me all the way to this point, you're probably sold on the idea of not selling tickets or tables. Step out and try it for yourself. Is it scary to get out of your comfort zone when you're not getting tens of thousands of dollars of upfront money? 
absolutely. But it isn't as risky as you think, and any risk oftentimes leads to great reward. As I said, you're going to open the door for many new friends and funds for your organization. You're going to increase the giving from your current owners, and you're going to see your event move from a plateau to a place of dynamic growth. Try this and let me know how it goes. If you've got questions, reach out to me for help. I'm happy to share with you what I've learned or give you recommendations. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below. If you ever made the switch from charging to complimentary meals, or if you're going to do it or consider making the switch, your comments below might help someone in this community to grow their dinner income and attendance significantly. If you do me a favor, let me know that you got this far in the video by typing the words, don't charge, in the comments section below. If you're interested in joining me and making a positive impact on our world and even on eternity, please hit the subscribe button and click the all button to be notified when the next video is released. If you find, want to find out what to do and say during a presentation, watch this video and raise more money than ever before. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.